Hello, you're listening to a new episode of Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim. And in this episode, we're discussing Force of Nature, The Dry 2. I'm Timmy Fland, movie buff. And I'm Lee Livingstone, entertainment journalist. And we love to talk movies, in this case an Australian film, in Force of Nature, The Dry 2, which is about five women who take part in a corporate hiking retreat, but only four come out on the other side. Federal agents Aaron Fork and Carmen Cooper head deep into the Victorian mountain ranges to investigate in the hopes of finding their whistleblowing informant, Alice, Alive. Force of Nature, The Dry 2 is written and directed by Robert Connolly, based on the book by Jane Harper. The film stars Eric Banner, Anna Torv, Deborah Lee Furness, Robin McLeavy, CC Stringer, Lucy Ansell, Jacqueline McKenzie and Richard Roxburgh. Right, Tim, where do we begin with this one? Because it has a lot to live up to this sequel, considering I gave mm. The Dry five popcorn kernels. Yes, we were talking about this because we were just reflecting on the time that's passed and, you know, with the dry, which we both absolutely loved. And I think not only was it a five out of five for you, but I think it was your first five out of five on the podcast. I think you might be right. There you go. And it's one of the best Aussie films released in years, The Dry. It was a brilliant adaptation of Jane Harper's novel and it got Aussies back in the cinemas right after COVID-19. Mm-hmm. It was an invitation to get out and enjoy cinema once again. So there's a lot to celebrate about The Dry. Absolutely. And the story is really tight. It's almost like a Yellow Jackets meet Lord of the Flies kind of situation. But Mm. instead of crashing somewhere in the remote wilderness, these women are sabotaged by someone's self-serving arrogance, I guess you could say. I mean, the stakes are immediately high in this one because it sets it up really nicely where an informant goes missing Alice, like we mentioned at the top of the episode, on a wilderness retreat and where danger isn't only limited to the unpredictability of nature, but that of our nature as humans. So Mm. there's so much compelling drama and subtext to this movie that peppers throughout the slow Mm. unravelling of the truth is really something to behold and keeps you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, they tease out the twists and turns to to keep you right there on the edge of that seat Mm. throughout the whole film. It's very well crafted. I have one little criticism. Go on. Where is Aaron Falk's girlfriend? His old mate from his hometown, Genevieve O'Reilly, they had that incredible chemistry in the first film. They really did. You know, I didn't even know that was missing. That's a really good question because in your conversation with Robert Connolly and Eric Banner in the interview that you did, which is available to listen to now, friends, and you can watch on our YouTube channel, you do ask what's the timeline between Mm. the dry and force of nature. And they said it's about six months. Yeah. So does he even mention his girlfriend no. in the film at all? I don't think so. But they did really want to make this one feel like a standalone film where you mm. don't have to have seen the dry to be able to pick it up. But if you haven't, you really should. We highly recommend it. Mm. But mm. I would have liked to have seen more of Aaron Fork and who he is now. You know, we established his trauma and the things that he was dealing with in the first film. Mm. And we once again flash back to some tense times in this one of his childhood, as we did with the first. It's it's structurally very similar to the first film. Yes. But we've met him now and we want to go further in his character development. That is a good point because this is where it leads to my small criticism of Force of Nature was around the character of Aaron Fork and the discovery that the film chooses to focus on. I agree. I wanted to explore more of Aaron Fork now. And they didn't really go there. They took us back to the past as Aaron Fork as a boy because the film does really beautifully marry the non-linear structure of this story. Mm. It jumps between multiple sort of timelines and Mm. stories. And I struggled to find the real relevance and impact of that experience of him as a boy yeah. with his mother and father trekking through the Victorian yeah. mountains. How, how did you connect with that subplot uh, for the film? As that evolved and it came to its conclusion, I did kind of go, well, what was the point of that one? Yeah. Yeah. Despite that, though, it is really a compelling story and, as you said, structured really well. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I could have done with a bit more 
now, a bit more character development now. It is a testament mm. to Jane Harper's writing, though, and then Robert Connolly's astute filmmaking and Eric Banner and Made Up Stories producing. This filmmaking team have come together so cohesively once again and they work together so well and it just shows on the screen and the product that they produce. They're working towards the same goal and with good material mm. and that just makes a good film. <laughs> Absolutely. It's trusting and leaning on a really solid source material and then also casting perfectly as well. Mm. And then with the skill of Robert Connolly in leaning into that juxtaposition between what nature offers and reveals and then what the nature and humanity reveals in people and the dynamic of the group that you mentioned earlier in the episode. Mm. It's so good. He, he is such an acute director that wants to deliver something visual and spectacular, but then something deeply intimate when it comes to character as well and keeps you on the mm. edge of your seat to know, okay, what is the truth here? And as it unravels, you get really excited about piecing it all together. Can I ask you, as you know and the listener knows, I can never pick a plot mm -hmm. twist or where it might be headed and I quite like that about myself that yeah. I don't really have that foresight. <laughs> I'm actually very comfortable with it. Did you see some of these twists and turns happen and maybe ultimately the truth at the end. What was that experience like for you? No, I didn't pick it. And Ooh. I really enjoyed bouncing between each of the characters going, oh, yeah, it was mm. it was them. It was definitely them. It was definitely them because of this, this and this. And then going, oh, no, mm. no, 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 it's definitely this person because of this, this and this. And then at one point I actually yes. thought the whole situation unraveled through a series of just unfortunate circumstances. Right. Yes, yes. They made you believe that way further into the story than you anticipated and then boom, it's like, okay. Because what was so good about this movie was how well written the characters were mm. and all their subplots that they brought into it. The dynamics of the group were extraordinary because everyone was dealing with their own demons or mm. their own scenario or conflict with people. Some of them married over and bled mm. into each other and that was a great sort of web of mystery wasn't it mm, um it and was. it was it was just so well done one of my favorite 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 things about these films both of them is the location oh, yeah. the way it brings australia to the screen as its own character i guess and the location in this one is a fictional name i think but it's a real victorian mountains uh, and the cast really went deep and remote to film this. I mean, there's some really funny stories of leeches and carting heavy equipment and people falling over. There was absolutely no airs and graces on this shoot whatsoever. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of Aussies, if I do say so myself, that, you know, we get down to business. If you ever need a solid actor, a solid filmmaking team with a strong work ethic, hire an Australian. Absolutely. No doubt about it. In your chat with Deborah Lee Furness, Jacqueline McKenzie, Deborah kept sharing her experience of shooting out in the literal wilderness mm. and being like, oh, actress down. You know, <laughs> they, were yeah. they were really in the thick of it. And that would be quite confronting because they, uh, I don't know why they did it this way, probably for the aesthetic, but they filmed in Victoria, but in the dead of winter. Like that is, it's cold down there yeah. in winter, but it gives that really unique visual flair. And I constantly had to be conscious of catching flies because my mouth was open because the shots of the landscape literally took my breath away. Mm. The fog and the mystery that engulfs the story, but from a nature and environment perspective was truly gripping and Deborah Lee said in your interview that they called it the wet uh, mm -hmm. in comparison to the dry. Like there's a really distinct visual language of Robert Connolly, but the juxtaposition in delivering something so dry and barren and arid as he delivered in the dry and then the lushness mm. of the Victorian mountain ranges was just a beautiful comparison uh, yeah. between the two films. And making them both look so stunning yes. for their different uniqueness. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it offers unpredictability, nature, that force of nature. Well, there's the title, just throwing that in there. Mm -hmm. It is quite considerate and you can never underestimate the power of your environment, but also what that invites is for like the truth in humanity to be, uh, you know, unearthed, like yeah. that tension and to put them in stressful 
environments just sort of unearths mm. all this all this unspoken word until that moment. Oh, so beautifully said, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I really love too is that unique Australian sound, like the birds yes. warbling, the trickle of the water, bugs making noises, spiders spidering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I can't even talk about spiders. Yeah, yeah. Stefan Ducio did the first film and he is just the master of capturing the beauty and uniqueness of Australia on the screen. This one is Andrew Commerce who did Blue Back with Eric Banner and Robert Connolly. Mm. He did High Ground. He's done Baby Teeth. So he's no stranger to that Australian landscape either and Australian dramas. Really, really talented cinematographer. What a gorgeous list of films and then the, the unique visual language of, mm. of all of them, use of colours and space. Uh, Baby Teeth comes to mind as a really, really great Australian film where the cinematography really popped. But if there's one goal that these filmmakers wanted to deliver was to immerse you in the environment, then they absolutely nailed it. Mm. It's just that beautiful collaboration in terms of lifting gorgeous words of Jane Harper and then the interpretation of Robert Connolly and then plotting it in this environment and bringing it together so nicely. like It's truly immersive. And the cast is absolutely stacked as we listed off at the beginning of the episode. Eric Banner is back. He's brooding as Aaron Fork. Do you need a moment? <laughs> Just give me a second. He's less tortured this time though. <laughs> less tortured, yes, yes. Yeah. As I said, I got to sit down in front of this known handsome man and uh, have a chat with him again for the fourth time in my career. And it was such a hardship. That's very impressively. And I'm sure you were kicking and screaming to go into that uh, yeah. press junket the other week. I was like, if I have to, sure. Yeah, I was like, I was away, so I couldn't join you, sadly. But uh, that you were like, yep, good. Get on with the job. It's just me and <laughs> Banner once again. Me and Banner once again. Don't mind again. me. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so Aaron Falk is less tortured in this one. He's worked through some of his issues in the first film. Now he's just mostly dealing with the personal guilt of putting his informant in danger mm. and the ethics of that. Yeah, he's, he feels so responsible for Alice's plight because his relationship with the land is played out in the in the subplot as him as a child. Like he knows how dangerous mm. it is, but he also knows the danger that she's in as a person given what he had and Carmen, his fellow detective, had tasked her with yeah. to uncover and reveal. So there's there's a lot of sort of layers to that yeah. that guilt. But Aaron Fork is the hero we all need, isn't he? He doesn't need flashy cars. He doesn't need action sequences. He's just doing his job and he looks good doing it. Tom Cruise couldn't pull off Aaron Fork. No. Because he would be uh, climbing trees and flying with the bats <laughs> uh, in the wilderness. Yeah. It, it'd go a totally different direction. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but I really love how Aaron Fork as a character gets to the truth and gets in under the skin of the people. Mm. He sees things differently through a different lens and his way of approaching as a detective, uncovering the truth and mm. talking to people and piecing it all together is really, really impressive to see play out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, who wouldn't spill your guts to Eric Banner? <laughs> yes, okay, I did it. Take me away. Take me away. Take me away. Lock me up. Where are the handcuffs? Get the handcuffs. <laughs> oh I guess if you ever find yourself in a spot of trouble, which I'm definitely not manifesting in any way, you'd hope to God that Aaron Fort was on the case because you would be willing and able to share uh, all the truths to him. He would believe in me. <laughs> He'd get you out of a pickle, maybe. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Anna Torg is one of the best Australian actors working today. Mm. International audiences will know her as Tess in The Last of Us and been in Mindhunter as well. We know her in dramas like The Newsreader and The Secret Life of Us. Her character in this one is a bit selfish, yeah? Yeah. She got herself into trouble and has to double cross to get out of it. She's awful. She plays mean so well. Mm. She's rude. She's also nasty. And you really dislike Alice. I really disliked her. But I was struggling with really disliking her character, but leaning in going, bloody hell, Anna Torv is good. Yeah. Like, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I meant to hate. I meant to really, mm. really feel gyrated. Oh, but gee, what a great line delivery. Like, I kept yeah. getting so caught up in 
the viciousness of her performance is just an incredible turn from her. And it's it's a testament to her as well that you you dislike this character to a degree, mm. but you're also pulling for her to survive. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because things slowly reveal themselves and you think actually there's some pretty nasty players in, in this mix of people. Like no one's throwing stones from their glass house. Do you know what I mean? It, mm. it doesn't necessarily make Alice look like a, a shining light, but you are sort of challenged to walk that moral tightrope, aren't you? Deborah Lee Furness, it's so exciting to see her back in front of the camera. She's a busy woman behind the scenes. She's campaigning for causes. She's looking after her family. Now she's stepping into the set lighting once again and dealing with leeches and delivering a powerhouse performance, despite all the danger that Robert Connolly and Eric Banner have put her in. (laughs) (laughs) You almost wonder whether the actors were aware of what they'd signed up for. But again, it just goes back to your point that Aussies just Mm. get in, get on, get off, get out and deliver a really good product. And she definitely does here. Her character, she's tough. She's formidable. She's strong. She stood her ground and was confronted with a lot of conflict. And she's kind of almost that uh, leader of the group. But she's got her own sort of intentions as well that you come to learn. And I particularly really liked her two-hander with Richard Roxborough, who plays her husband, Daniel. They were great. They have some great two-handers on Mm. the screen, even though it's only for short moments of time. But I loved seeing them together. We've also got the amazing Sissy Stringer. In this film, shout out to Stringer who has visited Popcorn Podcast before. You can check out that Mortal Kombat episode with uh, Josh Lawson on all good podcast platforms and on YouTube. Her star is seriously on the rise. Like, watch out, world. I loved her in this movie. She plays quite a pivotal role and she's got one of the most complicated characters on paper Mm. and she's just so gripping. I totally agree. Her star is on the rise and I can't wait to see what she does next. She absolutely nails it in this. Yeah, her character has a bit of a shady past and she's hiding some Mm. secrets. So you you wonder about her intentions and, and her dynamics with her sister played by Lucy Ansel. Yeah, the character of Brie, that's a great uncovering. Again, we keep using this language of uncovering truths and unraveling, but every character has their own subplot and discovery that always links back to the main plot and discovering where Alice is and what's happened to Alice. Mm. But it's so rich in, in, in its own right and that they're great together as a, as a mm. sister pair. Uh, we've got Jacqueline McKenzie as Carmen, who is Aaron Fork's partner. We haven't really seen before. I think she was maybe alluded to a little bit in the first film, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen her before. And uh, Jacqueline McKenzie is just one of our shining stars, isn't she? Romper Stomper. People will know her from Romper Stomper, but she's been in so much. Yeah, I liked the juxtaposition between how Aaron Fork likes to approach a case and then how she likes to, mm. to approach a case. So I really like the two-handers, the way they interrogated differently, how I guess they trusted each other in the process. So that was a, a really nice experience to mm. see play out here. Yeah, Jacqueline McKenzie was really great in this too. Yeah, like Aaron Fork take things a little bit more personally. Mm. And she's a little bit more removed from the case, a bit more professional, like not professional, I guess, maybe I keep wanting to say like cold hearted. She said she wasn't like that at all. But yeah, she she wasn't as invested, I guess, personally. Mm. She was more like by the book and direct and she would do anything to get a result. But the methods that her and Aaron have are quite different from each other. Mm. But in essence, they make a really good partner team yeah. uh, as a result of that. We've also got Robin McLevy as Lauren, who has a bit of a history with Alice. The kids go to school together and I think um, there was some bullying going on between their kids. So their friendship has been a bit strained. Mm. There's also some other subplot things going on to do with Alice that, that puts a bit of uh, stress on their relationship. Yeah. And their, their relationship really comes to a head out in the woods. Yeah, it really does. It's it's a playground for truth to be revealed and their relationship is really interesting playing out because you don't suspect much of it, but just like everyone else, there's something sinister going on underneath and mm. how that plays out is really compelling as well. Oh, I just want to talk about this film forever, but shall we wrap it up, Tim? Yeah, let's give it our best shot. 
A Force of Nature is a compelling follow-up to The Dry that once again plays Eric Banner as Aaron Fork against the striking beauty and unique landscapes of Australia. Jane Harper's best-selling story comes to life through the lens of a truly talented team of filmmakers and it makes me yearn for one more Aaron Fork adventure. Will it bust the 90% tomato rating and $20 million box office earnings of the first? At the time of writing, it hasn't opened yet, so it's hard to tell. But this is a solid crime drama with just the right amount of mystery to be an Aussie classic. I'm giving Force of Nature four popcorn kernels out of five. Nice, nice. And I'm manifesting a very healthy box office return for this one as well. So watch this space. For me, although not achieving the same impact as The Dry, Force of Nature is a slick and gorgeous Australian film that must be seen on the big screen. The unravelling and uncovering of the truth is a tense experience and paired with brilliant performances, especially from Anna Torv and incredible cinematography. This is an excellent whodunit. Fans of the genre, Jane Harper's novels and the film The Dry should see with great anticipation. I'm also going to rate Force of Nature, The Dry 2 for Popcorn Kernels Lee. There you have it. We're in agreement on this one. Force of Nature, The Dry 2, is in Australian cinemas from February 8. And don't forget to check out our interviews with the stars Eric Banner and Deborah Lee Furness. As well as director Robert Connolly and author Jane Harper. They're all over on YouTube. Friends, thank you so much. And as always, thank you so much for listening. We can't wait to catch you next time. Come and join in the conversation. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram at Popcorn Podcast. <laughs>